snakes and snails. The boys had the dog backed up against a fence, its timidity opening a seam of sadism in their adolescent brains. I pushed them aside. It was a bitch, teats raw with milk, belly sagging. We need to find her pups, I said, and turned to find that all but one of the boys had melted away. The remaining lad nodded and scuffed off, his eyes stuck to the ground. He soon returned with a squirming heap of puppies nested in his hoodie. He held the pups against his t-shirted chest for warmth, both his and theirs. His biceps, hard and narrow, pressed against the bones of his upper arms. He was still constructed of parts, this boy, not yet resolved into a man. The mother lifted herself and followed unsteadily as we made our way to the nearest vet's surgery. She pulled her freckled nose up to the scent of her pups and her whimpers hurried our steps. The boy told the vet to keep his hoodie. It was ruined anyway. He briefly rested his fingertips on the bitch's back between her two sharp shoulder blades and then he was gone. I see the boy sometimes in the street with his friends. He tips his chin to me in both greeting and warning and folds his bare arms across his pigeon chest. Not ruined yet, I think, as I lower my head to hide my smile. <laughs>